Morning breaks. They always said I was over the edge. And now I am. I really am. I'm over the edge. But in a gasp of air, I grasped a branch that I hoped had its roots in the rock or rock solid roots. But there's a breeze blowing, a stunning storm coming. Thickening ink spills and swills on a bleating paper sky. A crowd of rain on the horizon staggers nearer. I sway so, I know so, I slip a little more. I sway so, I know so, I grip a little more. These tender fingers in a clenched fist. I must have slipped my back when I fell. My back, it hurts like a howl, it stings like a scowl. It weeps and stings a cane and a, and a pain develops muscles that create mouths that simulate sounds of whole cities screaming. There's a storm coming, a coming storm. Dust spits from the cliff top into my river eyes, forcing tears over the banks to flood me. I will not drown in them. I will not drown. I'm hanging on. I am hanging on. In the zip of a thick ribbon of wind, a god or a devil appears floating in front of me. And he tells me in the hunch of a New York accent, let go, <laughs> let go. Death is the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end. And he continues for 41 days and 41 nights of the end of the beginning of the end. And in a crack of lightning, the God or the devil has vanished. Nothing more to concentrate on, but the sky and the breaching back and my knuckles so sore, cracked and numb, they favor a knot of bleeding wood. If I look down, and I do look down, I can see that blood has poured from my back, slid along the smoothness of my back's side, around my thighs, my knees, my ebonized legs. It falls, and I watch these red tears fall forever and transform into explicit flowers as they reach the floor. I will not become one. I will not become one. I am hanging on. I am hanging on. <laughs> whispers from above me. From above me, whispers gather. The cliff ledge lined with edgy people of all colours. Some humming. Amazing grace. Some simply staring. One I saw pointing at my back and wincing. A bearded man with his hand on a Bible or a red book or a revolutionary book or a black book or a white book shouted down to me in sermonic tones deeper than the sea. Let go! In the name of... Let go! A nervous follower peeps over the edge and offers the advice that there's someone down there. They'll catch you. And before I get a chance to answer them, they erupt into a sky shattering. Someone's crying loud. Let go. Someone's crying loud. The harmony of their collected voices woke the spirit of the sky and they threw crosses at me. It's raining crosses. I look down past my feet, a devil or a god, a man the size of the peas, mouthing the words up to me, let go.
nighttime was nighttime, nighttime was approaching, breathless I whispered, I, I will not fall, never have, never will, not fall, never have, never will, not fall, and as quick as they came, it's as quick as they were gone, but I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on, I'm hanging on, throughout darkness and fear, until sunrise and the stillness of morning breaking. I was a silhouette hanging from a branch against the chalky cliff, only the sound of my breaking back and the moaning sky for, uh, for, for comfort. The storm retreated to the horizon to, to recollect. Even the sea tried to throw off its reflection. And I listened more to the tearing of my back flesh as I hanged. To the whap flapping wet skin of my black back as it hanged. Tears painted salt veins on my ebonized skin. As that stark sunlight skidded across a bloodied sky, I swear there I sense the presence of two symmetrical shadows descendingly, descending. They seem to push back the clouds. I could see them in the corner of each of my eyes. They pushed warm air into my face, magnificent wings and my chest expanded with air, new muscles, new spirit and new air and there, with not a soul around me, I unpeeled my tender fingers from that dew-drenched branch and finally, after years, I let go. Why? Because I was growing wings all the time. And I can fly. Um, my name is Lem Sisse, and I didn't meet a black person until I was nine years of age. I didn't, uh, I didn't know a black person until I was 17 years of age. Um, I spent most of my adult life searching for my family and I found them all over the world. I got known as a poet. My first book came out at 21 years of age. Manchester helped me become the person that I always knew I was. The institutions that I was brought up in as a, in as a child did one thing. This is what they did. They drew a line and they said, if you cross over that line, you will be punished. And I knew that them drawing a line was a way of the institution defining itself. Therefore, only it would only justify itself if I crossed the line. And I didn't cross the line. I didn't, but I told the institution that I knew that it defined itself by drawing a line. My way of rebellion was I went barefoot for an entire year at 16 years of age and I wrote poetry. And I was told when I was in the children's homes that, uh, that I copied all of my poems off Bob Marley records. <laughs> I told that to the Queen of England when she gave me an MBE for services to literature in 2010. I told that to Patrick Stewart when he made me an honorary doctorate at Huddersfield University and said, make it so, because <laughs> he's the chancellor of, of the university. Uh, <laughs> I told that, that, that on stage at the Organisation of Africa Unity 50th Anniversary Conference in Addis Ababa at the Ethiopian National Theatre last year. And they just said, what? <laughs> but you know, you... you, you You've got to carry your story with you, haven't you? <laughs> I left Manchester a few years ago, which was the place that, uh, that, 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 that allowed me to be who it is that I always knew I was. And, uh, and that encouraged that. I, I, and I stayed there most of my adult life. And then I left. And a few people have said to me since, they've said, Lem, you've left. You're a betrayer of the North. Go, but never thee come back. Ah, I see the accent has changed. 
Who is one in bright, non-Manchester costume? So, you know, I kind of realised then that actually we are, and I believe myself to be, we are time machines. We take everywhere that we've ever been with us. Most of us grew up in small villages and small towns, and then we moved to the city and we took the small villages and the small towns with us. And by the way, when we lived in those small villages, uh, well, for me anyway, in Lancashire, right? <laughs> it was like I lived in Atherton. Lee was another world. Yeah, don't, please, don't, please, please. <laughs> You know, you really don't want to do that. <laughs> I know somebody's watching this thinking, is this the guy that read that first poem? Um, you really don't want to. So other, anyway, Atherton, and then there was Lee, and people in Atherton were like, well, I'm not going down Lee. <laughs> like, really? Really? The thing is, it's the same all over the world. It's the same all over the world. We all are in a constant state of what I believe to be migration. We are consistently migrating and taking everything that we were before with us. I didn't leave anywhere. We migrate from childhood to adulthood. We migrate from the womb to open air. We migrate from city to town. That idea of holding a person, chaining a person up and telling them to be what you, what you understand will always eat itself, which is one of the reasons that Media City is one of the greatest things that ever happened to Manchester, period, but that's a whole other story. So, I'm not on drugs, by the way, just, uh, <laughs> don't, don't even, don't, 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 don't. That will never get, this, this talk will now never get on TED. You know what I mean? Because the black Americans will be like, really? Did you have to, did you have to make that joke? Uh, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, there's so many things that I wanted to tell you. One is, uh, I spent all of my life, as I said, I was only met a black person when I was nine years of age. I had a lot of white people coming up to me and saying to me, I don't see colour, I'm colour blind. <laughs> okay, they only ever said it to me. <laughs> you think I'm flaming stupid? <laughs> Just a little, little bit of intelligence would tell me that they only say that they only never see colour when they see colour. <laughs> anyway, colour blindness is a disability. It's like saying to a paraplegic, I don't see legs. <laughs> Mentally, I'm a paraplegic. <laughs> really? And then there's not just that, you know, you're not black. I say I'm a black man, you're not black. You're a human being. <laughs> really? Really, I say I'm a black man and you say you're not black, you're a human being? And you don't think that's patronising? If a woman says to me I'm a woman and I say to her, no, no, no. No, you're a human being. What would she think about the person who said that to her other than that person does not want her to define herself but wants to define her for their own uh, doings? Jeez, la freaking wheeze. <laughs> I don't see colour. I'm colour blind. I, I, no, we're all human beings. <laughs> Jostics. <laughs> um, anyway, just want to say that... Uh, that uh, all family is, is a group of disputed memories between one group of people over a lifetime. And I only know that because I never had it. And therefore, we are a collection of memories. And therefore, uh, a few, a few, about two months ago, I set up the Christmas dinner. And it's going to happen in Manchester. And it's for care leavers. Because our experience of being in care happens after it. I spent most of my Christmases and most of my, uh, my um, birthdays in Manchester uh, weeping at Chorlton we Water Park, weeping at Chorlton Water Park, and uh, because because I was reminded of the memory of everything that I didn't have. Uh, we are a collection of memories, uh, which is why we are essentially time machines. And uh, I'm very aware that Christmas, if you've been brought up in care, can be a very dangerous time. And so we've set up a, a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, we've raised over the past six days, the people of Manchester uh, and Britain have raised uh, about 4,000 pounds of 5,000 in total. We've been given from the northwest of England organic turkeys. We've been given presents. We've been given, uh, 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 we've been given um, 
uh, organic uh, vegetables. We've been given an incredible secret location venue in Manchester. I've got together 12 incredible professionals from the Northwest who, who I said, all I want from you is that you have a can-do attitude and we can make this happen, and we can. So if you set your mind to make a difference, you can make a difference. I didn't know that my name was Lem until I was 18 years of age and the social services deemed it important to give me my birth certificate. I found out, found out when I was 21 that in Amharic, uh, which is my mother's language uh, in Ethiopia, my name Lemon, uh, thank you, uh, uh, means why. Uh, the question why. I found that out at 25 years of age after having published at least two or three books. Uh, I was and am meant to be the person I am doing what, exactly what it is uh, that I'm doing and I'm honoured to uh, have met some incredible people here uh, in the northwest of England uh, and everywhere else in the world that I've been actually and um, I think that I'm going to take this opportunity to say for the Christmas dinner the Christmas dinner that is happening at a secret location in Manchester for uh, about 45 care leavers between the ages of 18 to 25. That part of the reason that I did that is because I can have the Christmas too. Thank you. Good night. Right. 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 Right.